I came across this interview Candace Owens had with Amber Rose, which spanned across various topics, but there were certain remarks that Amber Rose made with regards to her faith and why she left her faith that I would like to address. Without wasting any more time, let's begin. I, I was always, I was like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but it's different now. Like I'm on, I'm like on fire for the Lord. I really am. And I, I you know what? I'll say this. I wish, to, I wish I was. I'll say that. I wish that I was. I miss the feeling of the comfort I had from God. Um, but I don't believe in God. I just don't. And I don't know if I can go back to that because um, on my journey to atheism. I miss the feeling and the comfort. And so she attests to the fact that she was comforted and she felt much better when she was a Christian. Most people who claim they do not believe in God are mostly not because psychologically they sat down to work the matter and then came out with that result of there not being God, which influenced their decision. Most people's lack of belief in God is purely emotional. And that emotions could be, these are my personal three takes that I, I write on to conclude this person's particular disbelief is emotional, right? One is that the person is engaged in certain activities that he knows goes against the Bible and isn't ready to quit those activities. And so they simply say, we do not believe in God. Number two is the fact that somebody might have a Christian, might have said something that had influenced their journey out of the faith. And you know, these people who preach fire and, brine, and, and is it brimstone or brimstone, they, they do much more harm than good. I know there are, there, are, there are times for that, but I come to realize that when people preach fire and brimstone, they do not consider the love of God factor. It's all about, they, they make it seem as if God is oppressing you to deny your free will, which is your ability to make decisions and subject yourself under some kind of oppression from God, which isn't true, right? And then number three reason will be that people just don't want God to be true. They know, even if they know there is a God, but isn't the Christian God, they still do not like the idea of a God having authority over them and instructing them as to how to go about their life and that. And so these are my three takes when people say they do not believe in God. Aside that, there are certain people who have made certain assessments who tell you we do not believe in God and then will drop reasons why they do not believe in God with biblical scriptures and verses which they, they find problems with. And these are people who have assessed certain things for themselves. And as a Christian, I would say they got it wrong. But aside that, they are purely emotional. Let's continue. On my journey to atheism, a lot of time was mostly just my mom saying, just scaring the living out of me when it comes to God and demons. And being a kid and saying, we got generational demons on our back. This whole family, we got generational demons. And I'm like, dude, I don't want a demon on my back. Generational demons. I know of generational curses. And if there are generational curses, then certainly there should be generational blessings, right? But there's this thing about African moms, you know, where they are so focused on demons more than God. And... I can't really pinpoint out if it's because of the kind of Christianity that they were introduced to. You know, in Africa, most people were introduced to Christianity by reason of people leading them to Christ and they not accessing the, or assessing the information for themselves. And so what they hear, they live their Christian life based on hearsay. And so if somebody comes and tells you that, 
I, I had this dream and there was this demon and then they form a doctrine around it which is in seal mm. the bible says that god does not give us the spirit of fear the reason why god does not give us the spirit of fear is because god is love john 3 16 says for god so loved god loved us so much such that he couldn't watch man perish and so he decided to come down from his throne pick up the form of flesh god incarnate you know and then do the necessary rituals to ensure that man is in right standings with him and so now we are all now one john 1 12 to 13 but as many as received him to them gave them power to become the sons of god and so now we are sons of God. The word received is lambano, which is to take. And that take is as a result of you exercising your free will, right? God isn't going to oppress you to believe in him. It is up to you to freely accept that free gift Christ has offered. And so there are a couple of gifts that Christ offers that are very, very essential, which every Christian should know. One of them is eternal life, salvation, and then the Holy Spirit. And these are free. You do not have to work to earn any of these. There's more. If you read the epistles, you would come across so many of them. And also the Holy Spirit. I think I made mention of the Holy Spirit. Your born again experience makes you one with Christ in God. And so this words of people saying, oh, I fear God. I, these are doctrines of demons. I was telling a very good friend of mine that the presence of God is love. And so if you are in your room alone and for some reason you feel loved, comfort, joy, you know the presence of God is there. And then the presence of the devil is fear. It's completely opposite. And so you hear some people say, I can't sleep all by myself because I fear. It's because you are in the room with the demon. You, you are living with the demon in the room, which you cannot see. And so the devil is real. But the good thing is that when one accepts Christ, you are no more of, biologically you are of your family, but spiritually you've been moved from your earthly family into the family of Christ. And so those curses that comes from your ancestry, you are the last stop. And this happens when people have the knowledge of who they are in Christ, right? When people lack knowledge, Hosea 4, 6 says, lack of knowledge, my people perish. And so people do not simply go to hell or become Christians and struggle their entire life simply because there was no God to prove himself. It was because they lacked the knowledge requisite for their salvation and their well-being in the kingdom. And when I hear stories like this, it makes me too sad that certain people just cannot understand what it means to be a Christian. That we have to explain this over and over. It's good to explain over and over again. In fact, it actually feels good to explain over and over again. But as a result of people not growing or you not seeing the growth in people, when you keep repeating over and over again, it becomes very sad. And there's been a couple of people that I have sat down and thought, who come asking me the same question over and over again? And I simply go back and then pray for them. You know, let's pray for Amber, Amber Rose. Some of these things are demonically influenced. And you can't really do anything within your physical strength, but, but simply by praying. So Even let's pray for her. I don't want a demon around me. Like, I don't have demons. You can have demons. My aunt can have demons. My uncle can have demons. I don't have demons. And that for me was far too much as a child, which in turn made me an atheist. It's just too much for me, Candace. I'm telling you, I... <laughs> she made mention of two things, which is you can have demons, everybody could have demons, but I don't want to have demons. And then she concluded with, that was far too much, okay? And so I would like to talk concerning the law, which she made mention far too much. And so there was this kind of burden on her to serve Christ. And that could 
be attributed to the fact that people preach too much of the law and so people and so most people who accept christ feel this is too much i can't which i would come there but then she made mention of i don't want to have demons everybody else could have demons except me the devil comes to steal kill and destroy right but god as the creator doesn't come to steal kill and destroy god doesn't steal your conscience and deceive you into following him you have to freely accept christ and as a result of that you'll be able to understand what it means to be a follower and then you can exercise your love properly that is where hebrews 11 11 um, 6 comes in that without faith it is impossible to please god they that come to god might believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently the word diligently there has to do with people that are aware of their surrounding they are aware of who they are in christ and so they do what is necessary or required of them now if the devil would come to steal kill and destroy then i don't think it is up to you to choose whether demons come to you or not for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but again and so principalities and so the moment you are born you are born into a warfare right you do not choose you do not get to choose whether the devil comes for you or not there was never a time where a thief or an armed robber went to rob somebody and then give them a notice that hey be careful we'll be coming to your home today right he's a he's a robber he comes to steal without your notice and then shoots kill and then destroy what you have worked for for years he destroys them all that is how jesus christ uh, that is how the bible describes the devil he comes to steal your conscience and your ability to believe in god one of the greatest work the devil has done in our time is to convince people to believe there is no god and he has really done a good job at that that there is no god he he sits outside and then just enjoys that view of people claiming there is no god because he knows how ignorant they are destroy and then finally he would manage to destroy you and so people get destroyed through trauma through uh, uh, depression some people have been depressed so much so that they hanged themselves you just made the devil win if we wrestle not against flesh and blood then you should know that you are born into some kind of warfare which you will need some level of help to and that help christ is offering and that leads me to the law where she spoke concerning it was too much for me right quote it was too much for me when people preach the law they push away what christ came to offer and tend to switch that grace where you do not have to work for grace is simply the unmerited favor of god and so you didn't do anything to merit the favor of god nobody worked or lived a perfect life such that god saw it found it worthy and decided ah oh, now this is the time for me to die for them no we were actually trash god created a beautiful world which we came in and made a mess out of it and god decided to come go on the cross open his arms wide and then accept all who are willing to come unto him and it's so sad now we still point people to the law romans 13 9 talks about list all the law and then ends with all these law have now been summarized to one which is love your neighbor as yourself and as a result of loving your neighbor you love god you worship god it's sad because now the love your neighbor here in our society today has been twisted We've, t- we've, we've twisted love with tolerance. And so now we say love is to tolerate whatever that people are doing, which is not true. 
love isn't to tolerate whatever that people are doing but i wouldn't be speaking concerning love today will be for for another time and we 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 handle on people so much work 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 to end this with god work to, for God to be happy with you. Work this kind of work to be at peace with God. Work this kind of work to feel good. And then as a result of you feeling good, you know God has forgiven you. Work this kind of work to, to, to make God excited. What? No. We do not have to work for anything. James 2.12 or 2.20 speaks concerning work, which most people have twisted it, Right? talks about your words and then your works. And so if you proclaim that truly you are a follower of Christ, then your works have to show. Which isn't to say that go and work or follow the law in order to affirm your faith. No, that wasn't what James was saying. But most churches, denominations today take that and then handle a, a coal of fire on their church members such that most of them leave. What James was trying to say was, if you have truly accepted God, then it would show from within you. If you claim you are a follower of Christ, then you wouldn't prostitute. This is not to say that stop prostituting and then you would be at peace with God. That wasn't what James was saying. That is work. Stop smoking and then God will love you. Do this and then God will forgive you. Do this and then God will be at peace with you. That is work right it is rather the other way around if you have accepted christ then christ now has to work good works within you which in turn would make you a good person and so now you wouldn't prostitute you wouldn't smoke there is no desire to smoke there is no desire to steal there is no desire to rape there is no desire to be gay you know I've spoken quite a number of times concerning gay homosexuality and those people have blocked my channel. You could see I have quite a number of followers, but then the viewers are low. It's because YouTube has some way shadow banned me because I spoke concerning the LGBTQ plus community and then they weren't excited with it. And so they reported me and yeah, but this wouldn't deter us from preaching the good news. We would still have to preach it because souls are being lost and we have to get into the game, get ourselves dirty in making sure that at least one is saved. And so Amber here, I pray God, God would deliver from any kind of demonic oppression concerning Christ that has been taught to her. You know, it's not good. God is love. God loves you so much that he chased you down here. And so for us to say that, that's difficult as something else, you know. <laughs> These are going to be your so famous funny. last words because I'm telling you, when you when you go a different it's path, it's all too much. For it me. all starts with realizing one lie, and then you realize that there's only one author of lies, and that's Satan, and there's only one author of truth, and that's See, God. I don't believe Satan is real. Yeah. I don't believe Satan is a thing. You, well, you just you were up close and personal. That is exactly what I said, right? One of the successful works the devil has done in this generation is to convince people that he doesn't exist how could you work in hollywood and not believe satan is real which is some different level of darkness and ignorance on your part to work in hollywood and not believe that well you might not necessarily believe that satan is real but to, to work in hollywood necessitates you think of the world to be in two parts right how they oppress you into doing things that you don't want to do. How they want you to go naked all the time. How people are doing their best to mock only Jesus, not any other prominent figure in society or religious leader, but Jesus alone. Jesus, only Jesus, only him. And then you come say you do not believe in the devil that that john 1 5 says that light cometh and then darkness couldn't comprehend that word darkness in greek is scotia which speaks of the absolute deprivation of light 
and in the Greek, it could also mean ignorance. And so complete ignorance with regards to the works of the devil and the existence of God. And so they live in complete darkness. Even if the devil exists, they wouldn't want to believe the devil exists because now if the devil exists, then they would have to go look for a solution and they would be told that their solution is Jesus Christ. And this is the same Jesus they are running away from. And so they wouldn't want the devil to be true. Let's not be ignorant. For the devil, our adversary, prowl around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil wants to destroy you. Don't give him that upper hand. Close and personal with him in Hollywood, like that, like what you're hearing when, when you hear Cardi some talking about, I said goodbye to these demons. Like she just is not realizing that's real demons. Like I mean, I resonate with that figuratively. But it's not figurative. She's wrestling with real demons, right? And and they want you to think it's figurative. And I don't even have to argue with this because I know, I just know how the Holy Spirit moves. Like, I'm just like, I like, mean, I, 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 I Candace, just when there was something about it. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and my prayers were not answered. You don't think- When I was a think, Christian. You don't think- We hear people say that a lot, that I prayed and prayed and prayed and my prayers weren't answered. Some people go that extra mile of saying, my prayers didn't work when I needed God to come through for me at this particular time, which is very sad. The thing to note is that God always answers our prayers. The problem here is that we are unable to hear God or two, we do not like the answer God gives us. God always answers our prayers. He always does. The problem is most of the answers God will provide to you might go against what you desire to do. And so you just ignore it. And then you hear most people say, oh, my mind told me this. Oh, I felt like doing this. Oh, I, I reject this. I had to fight through this in order to go naked on the screen. Which is very interesting. I had to fight my mind in order to go naked on the screen. Isn't this sad that you have been pushed to go on the screen and then there is something within you telling you no and then you confidently say, I have to fight that in order to achieve. And so God is always speaking to people. The problem here is you do not like the answer. You do, And I have been through different phases of my work with God. And recently I came to acknowledge that Truly, I was very disobedient because I wanted the will of God to be done in my life because I was a Christian and I loved God, but I didn't like the will of God because the wills that God brought before me were mostly not in line with what I wanted to achieve in life. But as a result of listening to God, now I have taken God's work full time, you know, and this is me here. I never thought of coming to sit here to do this. Never. I just study my Bible, teach my family, teach my the friends around me who, and then I'm good with it. But, you know, I felt God was calling me to do something bigger. And this is me today. I would have never done it. But as a result of acknowledging how disobedient I was and the fact that I loved God and so I wanted to hear God, I had to surrender, right? I know God is speaking to you as you are watching. There are so many things that God has said to you that you do not agree with, but that is God's will for you. And because God is a good, loving God, he can't force you to obey that. The best he can do is to present what is good to you. And if you would obey, I mean, you would live a, um, a perfect life that pleases God. And as a result of that, all that you yearn for, you would achieve them at the right time. That is what people forget mostly. At the right time, you would achieve them. Your prayers were answered. Somebody said to me, God never doesn't answer your prayer. He either says, uh, not right now, or I have something better in store for you. Maybe, maybe God answered my prayers by all this. I'll, That's what I'm saying. Sure. I'm telling you. I okay, think Candace. he was like, not right now. And I'm sorry to have to turn into a pastor right now, but so I just... So let me ask you a question. If I was Hindu or Muslim, you would still say the same thing? I'm Christian. I want everybody to believe in Christ. Okay. Yeah.
Christ is the Lord, Christ is the Savior. And you, like I said, I remember feeling like that. And when I was like, well, if God was real, he wouldn't allow this to happen to me. He wouldn't allow this to happen to me. And then when I opened myself up and realized, I'm like, oh, he put me in that scenario because he knew that I would be able to speak on this. He wanted me to go through this negative and this negative because he knew that this was the ultimate equation and he's the great mathematician. And he was like, you need a plus here, a minus here, a minus here, a minus here. And so when you're hitting and you're seeing all these negatives in your life, you're just like, well, God can't be real because why would he do that? And then when you let go I, and let I God- I wish I had what you had. I want everybody to believe in Christ. Yeah. The difference between Christianity and other religions is the fact that every other religion is still looking for God. And those other religions who claim they have found God are scared of God. But Christianity teaches you something different about God, which is God is a father. He is the best. He is better than the best dad in the world, right? And so Christianity will teach you that God is good, loving, a loving father such that you can go up to him now that he has stretched out his hand to you which other religions do not have christ offers so many things that other religions do not give you other religions are worshiping different kinds of god worshiping statues worshiping all this but luke chapter 24 i think i might be wrong i would look for the scripture speaks concerning the ignorant and those that aren't ignorant of who christ is and so if we are saying people would go to hell simply because they never heard of Jesus, we have to be very careful, right? Because then it raises an emotional topic, which is how can a loving God allow people to go, these are, go to hell for not knowing or hearing about him? Now, these are emotional topics and, and it could do a lot of harm. The Bible makes it clear in the book of Luke, I'll look for the scripture, that those who were ignorant of the Father's will will be beaten with fewer blows. But those who knew, in other words, those who heard and rejected him, he, hell is simply not wanting it God's way. Hell is simply, I want it my own way. And so God grants you that path to, to take to hell, which leads to hell. And so it is not as if God is in heaven weighing some kind of beam balance, saying your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds and so go to heaven your evil deeds outweigh your good deeds and so go to hell no that would be very petty of god to take that stand it is through christ we enter into heaven yeah and so christians are called to go if we have heard the good news then we have to be bold to declare it out because most people are still in this demonic worship and the interesting thing is that they all know that there is some kind of God greater than what they worship. That is the, the sad truth. Any other person worshiping a different kind of God other than Jesus knows. Because these God's people worship demand so much from them. They demand human sacrifice. They demand so many kinds of sacrifice and offerings, which the being, the spirit within you, continually desist or hate or dislikes. Right. And so every human on this earth, whether with the knowledge of God or without, knows that it is either the God I am following is the wrong God, but they do not have the knowledge of any other God, and so they simply follow the God they know. Or I do not know God at all. I don't. And the Bible tells us that we should fight our own salvation with fear and trembling. Right? And so it is not up to me to question God as to how he is going to judge certain kinds of people. God is a just God. He wouldn't rip anybody off on judgment day. It would shock you the kind of people you would meet in heaven. Right? People who never accepted Christ as their, as their Lord and personal Savior. Abraham never accepted Christ. Rahab, the Gentile prostitute, never accepted Christ. So many people never accepted Christ. But they lived according to the will of God. And personally, I feel that people today who have never heard of God will be, will be in line with those Abrahams and Isaacs and all those people. And so let our judgments be made with a lot of carefulness, else we might cause a lot of damages. 
okay if you made it through the video kindly don't forget to first of all pray for amber rose in the comment section let's pray for people let's pray for people you see what is going on in america now america needs prayers because now it's so much trouble where we preach that people should be very intelligent but then now people have gained the knowledge right and they're still acting very foolish and so let's pray for america also don't forget to like subscribe share until my next video peace out